everybody. Uh, I'm Wes from Fundamental Games, and today I want to show you how to use Tabletop Simulator to be able to create your own deck of cards. And that might sound pretty straightforward, uh, but when you think about it, there's a lot of complications to getting uh, a deck that can sort, that you can uh, search through, that you can shuffle. And TTS actually makes it quite easy. And given that cards are the number one component in board games, right now, at least that I've seen, and there's many games that are just cards only, uh, I thought this would be a good building block or a starting point to help introduce you to Tabletop simulator. Uh, so I'm going to keep my window open so you have something to look at if I'm, I'm doing something off screen. Uh, but I'll have the screen here that you'll see, which is the Tabletop Simulator uh, Deck Editor. You can download that right off of Steam. So you'd have to find and open that, and this is the screen it would start on. And then on the bottom right I have the Tabletop Simulator screen, just to, as that's where we're going to be importing cards to. Uh, what I can't show you is my um, personal computer files, uh, but you'll get the idea when I drag and drop. So to start off with, what we're going to do is under Tabletop Simulator, we're going to create a new deck. Uh, when you create a new deck, it's going to give you an option to have a different sizes. So we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to make a deck of 40 cards using, um, let's say, uh, 7 width by 6 height, which is the equivalent of 42 cards. Um, so if you click OK, you end up with a blank screen, and the blank screen doesn't do you a lot of good, but uh, there is actually a hidden interface on that screen. So what I would do from there is I would have to go and find my 40 cards. So I'm going to use my Legends of Novus file and go into my encounter deck, and I just happen to have um, quite a few cards here. And so the fastest way I find to do is kind of group um, them together by holding shift and grabbing all the cards that I want to grab. So let's say I want to grab uh, all these cards you can't see, but I drag them and I drop them on, and all of a sudden you see all the cards that I dragged and dropped. Not quite 40 cards yet, but I have some more that I can drop on. Um, I can hold control to click certain ones off my screen um, until I get enough group together. So I can just kind of drag and drop all of these, and they'll keep filling it in. And um, maybe what I want to do is make um, copies of more that I have. So I might only have uh, 26 images, but some of those I might want duplicates of. So let's say that I shift and copy all that by pressing Control c Then I could click over here, Control v and just copy that out. And so I'll just go around and I will um, fill up my blocks. Uh, one thing they do recommend is that you always keep the last block open. So if you have a 40 card deck, um, you could have the last two spots empty, for example, but you wouldn't want to fill the whole block. And I can't recall the reasons. It has something to do with dimensions. Uh, anyway, uh, once you've done that, you've got your full complement of cards there. What you need to remember is your deck size. We need to remember that I am 7 across by 6 high. And then what I'm going to do is click File and I'm going to save my deck, or sorry, export my deck, Control e which will export it. And that's going to export my deck as an Imgur image, which will be a single PDF of every one of these cards in very high definition. You can see that that uh, pixel size is quite large, uh, 3400 by 40, or 4000 there. So I'm going to export it, and what it's going to do is it's going to turn my, um, my card sheet there into one single image. And what I will do is save that in my files. You have to save it to your personal computer. And I'm just going to save it as a test deck. All right, so I save that as test deck. And I click Save. And so that's going to create that image for me saved right onto my computer. So now, from that point on, you don't actually need this deck editor anymore. You can save this um, layout if you like. Um, I found I don't necessarily need it. I can always re-upload it fairly quickly. And then what I would do is I would switch to my Tabletop Simulator. But what I'll do is I'll make Tabletop Simulator just a bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. So we're going to take that over. All right. So once we're in the Tabletop Simulator screen, um, sorry about that. So we're in the Tabletop Simulator screen. And um, so what I did is I went to a game and I just started a new game. So I didn't even use a board that I already had. So I have a brand new table here. This is just a generic tabletop that it, it came with. And what I want to do then is I want to create an object and a new component. And within components, there's all kinds of options you have. There are all kinds of things you can do, and I'll try to share and teach more as I as I have the ability to and learn. Uh, but we're going to teach you today is about cards. So you click on cards, and then you'd want to click on custom deck. If you chose custom card, you're only making one card. What you want to do is be able to import all your cards at once so that you're not doing um, a deck of 80 cards 80 different times. So I do custom deck, and um, what I want to do is 
import that image that I just made. So on the face, I'm going to click the folder and I have to find on my laptop or your PC um, that file that I made. So I'm going into my TTS file and going in to find my test deck that I just made. And it's going to ask you if you want to load it to the cloud or if you want to load it to local. So cloud means that it's going to be saved right into the tabletop simulator world by Steam um, and that um, you'll be able to upload it to make it public later on and I mean that anybody that gets access to your game has access to those images. Um, if you keep it local you're just creating a game for yourself on your computer that nobody else can see unless you invite them to play with you. So I'm going to click local because it's faster to upload uh, but even um, if you have a de decent speed internet it doesn't take long to use cloud. Um, you do have the option for unique backs but I'm not going to click that. That's a different thing that you learn later on. Most games or most decks you're going to have will have uh, a same back. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to have a card size image that matches the size of your card fronts that you uploaded and you'd put that file on. So going through my file I'm going to go to my card backs and choose the encounter back because that's the type of card I chose. So encounter back. And again it'll ask you cloud or local. I'll pick local. So now I've got all my fronts on one image and I got on my backs as a single image that goes on every card. The next part is the most important part. When you're trying to design a deck um, you need to be very specific about how you laid out that graph of cards. So if I just chose yes and did 10 by 7, it would completely distort those cards and you'd wonder what went wrong. Uh, what you have to do is you have to change your width to the number of width wide your cards was, which in my case was 7 cards wide, and then your height by the number of cards you had up and down, which in my case was 6. And the most you can ever have is 70 cards or a 10 by 7 grid. You'd have to import multiple decks and merge them together to have a bigger deck if you have a game that has that many cards. All right, and then the number of cards is important too. So if I had put 70 cards, then they're all going to be completely distorted. I have to have the precise number of cards that I had on that graph uh, or that chart, and I had 40 cards there. You do have an option to turn your deck sideways. Uh, some cards go in landscape mode, so you may want to tell the computer that. Um, and you can also do back as hidden if you don't want uh, your opponents in a live game to see certain things. But we're just going to keep it this simple, and then we click the import button. So what it does is automatically takes every back and puts it on the back of every card. Um, so you can see here that one image that I uploaded gave me every card. And then the next thing you can see is that I have, uh, we're just going to group these back together, I have a deck of 40 cards. And so... Um, if we flip it over and zoom in, you can see all those cards images that I put are perfectly aligned on this tabletop simulator deck, um, every image that I put up there. Um, if I had that math wrong, you would see these uh, distorted. There would be white space on the side, or the cards would look fat or flat or just really odd. Um, but there you have it. And if you want to take a quick peek through your deck, you can right-click on your deck and click on Search, just to make sure I did all my cards upload. And every, any one of those cards will um, uh, show in there for you. Now while we're here talking about cards, I can teach you a couple other quick tricks about Tabletop Simulator that, that you might like. So first off, let's teach you about grouping. If I click and drag over an entire rectangular area, you'll see all my cards get highlighted. If I press G, it'll group them all together. So G is a good number to, to get scattered cards together. If I want to flip my deck back over, I would press the letter F. And there you go, I've got my deck all laid out for me there. If I want to draw a card, I can right-click and click Draw, or um, right-click and you can actually deal cards out to a player. Once a card's in your hand, um, you'll see it's on the bottom of the screen on top of your table, but your opponents can't see that, that it's kind of hidden. Um, but we'll take that out of my hand. Um, another cool option is being able to zoom. So if you're wanting to use Tabletop Simulator, like I've done in the past, to really showcase um, your game without having to use live visual cards, um, holding the Alt button can zoom in on your card. And the key is that you use your uh, mouse wheel or your zoom function, and you zoom in, you can make it as big as you want. So now, when I zoom any card that I zoom, I can flip it over and I can just hold the button and really showcase the art and what the card does in really high definition format instead of trying to pan and zoom with the card when you're doing it in a live version on your real tabletop. Another thing you might want to do when you're using a deck is to randomize it. So you don't want to have to click right hit, click shuffle all the time, even though you could. Uh, what you would want to do is make it so that when a player starts a game, they have a pre-randomized deck. So on the left hand side, there's uh, zones that you can create and I can choose randomize and put a little box over top of my deck 
and that will tell the computer to randomize everything that's in that zone. So what will happen going forward is anytime I restart this game, anybody else that plays this game will all have it randomly different instead of if they didn't shuffle having the same sequence of cards. So those are just a few tips and tricks about um, how you can create a deck of cards in Tabletop Simulator and uh, a couple of quick functions for them. There's so many things you can do in this application. I just love this tool, but I wanted to share that with you because it's the most common way that I've been helping other creators get their game from a physical copy and all the wonderful art and um, graphics they have into the ether sphere of a computer so they can actually play test with other players or change cards up without having to reprint them. Uh, it can be helpful in so many ways. Hopefully you learned a little bit something from this tabletop simulator explanation and uh, have fun creating games if you want me to help uh, convert your game into a tabletop version by all means reach out to me and I'll see if I have the time to do that for you. Uh, thanks for watching and you have yourself a great day.